This episode is dedicated to the memory of Sid Vicious. Hey everyone, welcome back. It is time for our wrestling review, our long-awaited review of New Japan, the king of sports. We are covering the G1 tournament, the whole tournament. We're not going to cover it match by match. We're going to talk about some of our highlights, some of our lowlights, some of our favorite matches, maybe pick three of our favorite matches, and then we'll talk about the finals. Um, We are only going to be talking about tournament matches. Any other match that happened that was inconsequential, we will not be talking about. Agreed? With me once again, we have Campo Reviews, the man who reviews movies, TV shows, wrestling, and everything in between, including Batman. He has a Batman review. Go on and check that out. The Batman, the Cape Crusader, the animated series that was out a couple weeks ago. There's a House of the Dragon review. Probably an Alien uh, Romulus review coming up soon, too, if it's not already Probably, out. yeah, since we're filming it right now. Right? Exactly. <laughs> so... <laughs> With that, we are going to talk about New Japan instead. So the G1 tournament happened over the last month. It ended last Sunday. It did. I enjoyed this tournament. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was it was less boring than the last one. Yes, I think because they reduced the amount of blocks. Because last year we did the the, that last year this year they went back to the two block format. But instead of 10, I think, what is it they do? Five, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, 10. They used to do eight and eight, right? In the four blocks? I, th- I think or it was eight, eight. Yeah. Eight, 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 eight. Yeah. And, and the four block was, yeah, eight. So it. I think there, I mean, to be, let's be fair. Like the talent, there's not enough talent in New Japan right in now. In New Japan, to- but I think they can do what they did well this tournament was they they brought in the right people. I think mm-hmm. they did it in the juniors as well from yeah. other companies. And I think that now they have this um, obligation to fill having um, at least a Noah guy, mm-hmm. at least a uh, young, CML guy uh, and, and a an AEW lion. Ring of Honor guy and a young lion. I think yeah. you got with this having four random people in it is like basically what you got to go for. And stars you want to push. Yeah. So. But we'll talk about the tournament. Um, let's talk about some of our favorite matches. First of all, let's talk about uh, Suji and Takeshita. That was probably my favorite match of the tournament. The f- Su- Suji Takeshita won. Suji Takeshita won? Yes. The one that was the bracket match, not the semifinals. Spoilers. Yeah, I, that's that is probably top three for me. Yeah. I would say. Anything else that stood out for you? Uh, Shoda versus um oh my god i forgot what the match was was it the jake lee match or was it yeah the... shoda versus jake lee was uh was uh, was amazing yeah um so it was naito versus lee yeah that was pretty solid i don't think it would make my top three though but no i i would say a hundred percent show uh shoda versus jake lee the yeah. um suji versus Takeshita, Takeshita won and Takeshita mm-hmm. versus ELP. Those are my those are my three yeah, matches. Yeah, that one was a really good match. Um, Goto versus Shingo was also a pretty good match. I'm pretty sure that it was Goto versus Shingo, right? I'm not. That was in the. I head. think that was in the the semis. No, it was not Goto versus Shingo, was it? They were in the same block, right? Yes, Goto. Yeah. No, so it was Goto and regu- Shingo were in opposite blocks. You're thinking opposite maybe Shingo blocks. and Khan? Oh no, it wasn't Shingo and Khan. Um. Oh my God! Who's in? Which one of them is in Jeff Cobb's group? Uh, it's Finley, Takeshita, Suji, Narita, Cobb, Hanare, Goto, Bolton. So it was Goto versus Cobb then. That was really Goto good. Versus Cobb. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like there's so many people in this. Like you're watching it for so long. Mm-hmm. I didn't even take notes, which is unlike me. Usually, Same I'm here. always for this for, is all up here for now. For the G1, I'm usually always taking notes, but mm-hmm. this time I was like, mm. "Well, we didn't need to this time." Like we said, it was a smaller group, it was a smaller block, and we kind of knew everybody in in this, I guess, tournament. Is a... yeah, well, we watched it. I don't, I don't know about you, but this year the tournaments. I've watched a lot more sporadically. So like I'll watch like three days in a row and then I won't watch it for like six days. And then I'll try to catch up on six days and I won't make it. 
Yeah. And then I have to, then I fall behind by like two days and then I catch up and then I let it get too far ahead of me again. And I have to catch up all over again. Yeah. With me, what I did was I tried, so I get an hour lunch break at work. So what I try to do is I try to watch whatever tournament matches I can at work. And then whatever I'm not caught up on, I'll watch on the weekend at home. So this way I'm caught up by Sunday. So this way I can go back into the routine on Monday. Yeah. I missed two full days. I don't remember what days they were, but I looked mm-hmm. them up on cage match and the ratings for all the matches weren't high. So I didn't go back and finish those days. I don't yeah. remember what days it was. But I mean, all in all, I think this was a pretty solid tournament. Um, So let's talk about some standout performers, maybe, and some disappointments in this year's. Takeshi is the standout. Not even close. He's He was the best wrestler in this entire tournament. Yep. I agree. Um, every match he was in was good. Mm-hmm. I I I, I mean we're not going to get to spoilers, but but I mean okay, but we know Takeshita. Someone let's let's talk about someone other than Takeshita. Then who else was a standout for you? Mm. See, with me, I'd got to go with Bolton. No, nah, I don't think so. I think Bolton had a very solid tournament. I think his tournament was solid in terms of like the way that they presented him. I don't feel like his matches were great. I felt like he was very boring. All his matches were boring. Okay. Um, he doesn't have, he's a WWE type wrestler at this point. Like I'm not, yeah. he's going to grow, but he's so like basic and he's just a large man. That's like, how, and that's how he wrestles. I'm not going to, yeah. I'm not saying it to shame him because we're fat. We're a fan. We like, but like, yeah, of course, when you're watching the rest of the matches in this tournament, to me, that wasn't, if anything, I would say realistically ELP was fantastic this year compared to Sad the last ELP year. was great. I, even though he didn't. In terms of the tournament, he didn't do very well. His character the, development. Every match was good. Was good. Yeah. He, Jeff Cobb was great in this mm-hmm. tournament. I don't know what the fuck happened towards the end where he blew it. Like he was on the top of the whole thing yeah. for forever. I mean, he only finished, I mean, he only finished two points behind. But he was winning the block for the entire yeah. tournament almost. Yeah. And then just blew it at the end. Yeah, because Cobb went like four or five straight wins in a row. Yeah, I almost could have guaranteed you at that point a storyline coming back with of Jeff Cobb, Cobb and Zack Saber Jr. Well, that was that was both our picks at the beginning of the tournament. We thought it was going to be Cobb and Zach with Takeshita finishing pretty high. Yeah, and, and but then, we also I, predicted Jake Lee. That's a bit of a disappointment for me. Yeah, and and it's weird because oh, you know, most of a lot of his matches were just okay. Yeah, he didn't impress me too much. If if anything, like if we got to say one of the most disappointing for me was Jake Lee and Sonata. Oh yeah, Sonata this whole tournament was disappointing. Want to talk about most disappointing wrestler Sonata? Yeah. I mean, um, Naito was okay, but we knew Naito wasn't going to win because he's the champ. Usually they don't put it on the champ. Yeah, and also he he half assed like 50% of his matches. Yeah. Uh Uemura had to pull out cuz he legit got hurt. Yeah, which that's a little upsetting, but I mean, it is what it is. The hmm. Goto was really good. Goto had a really good tournament. Yeah, but I mean, you can always count on Goto to give you a solid tournament. Like, at least this year, they kind of refreshed it a little bit and didn't have him go to the semis like they always do. Yeah, Shingo was really good, speaking of going to the semis. Shingo yeah. had a, a fantastic And so tournament. was Great Okan. Great Okan turned it around from last year. Great Ocon did, but I feel like towards the end, his the his last couple of matches were boring. Yeah, he was kind of coasting, maybe. He has that that bull no leg aspect where it's yeah. like once you've seen a match, it's the same match every match. And I noticed that same thing was with Hanare. Yeah, I don't know, man. We really like Hanare, and yeah, it's not that we don't like happening. the guy, but it's like they need to do. I he's what does he's still the never open champ, right? As far as we know, but you never yeah. know with New Japan. They could have had a house show where someone switched belts. And switched. that's that's where they're so different than like WWE. Like yeah. they can have a house show and a belt will change hands and it counts. WWE wouldn't count. They would never do like that. Ever yeah. happen. Because they, they'd have the victory on a count out or a, you know yeah. what I mean? So this way the belt doesn't change. Um, let's talk about something we didn't talk about. Yeah, Gabe Kidd. What'd you think of Gabe Kidd's performance? I thought he was really good. Actually, there was a really, really good Gabe Kidd match. Um, oh Kidd my versus God. Umino. Oh, yeah, that's that was a banger. That was a banger. Yeah. Kidd versus Umino. Evil even had a pretty solid tournament. And we're not the biggest Evil fans. Like, I mean, we like no, him. Ren Narita was pretty good. 
Yes. He, this is the first time where I really feel like that potential that we thought he had came through. Yeah. In, in matches. Like he really held his own in a lot of those matches. Yeah, he did. He actually did. Um, but, uh, I mean, other than that, like, I mean, I felt bad for Yuya dropping out. Even Umino, are they telling a story with him? I don't know. Listen, the Umino thing I'm kind of lost on. I We could tell that there's definitely a story building between Yoda Suji and Takeshita. Like, mm-hmm. they're trying to have something there. They're, they're legit. That's their new, like, Kenny versus Okada. Yeah, that and, is. And, I, and I, I see it, right? Like, they, they're totally, like, building for that. Um. I, I, I mean, let's okay. Let's talk about the bracket for a second. Okay, yeah. So and we can just weave we have things block in. A. So block A. Um, you had Zack Saber Jr. winning the block with fourteen points. Shingo Takagi, Great Okan, Evil, and Tetsuya Naito all with ten points. Jake Lee, Sonata, Gabe Kid, Umino all with eight points, and Kit, uh, my boy Caleb Newman with four points. He's yeah, an he's, afterthought. He, he stunk it up. Yeah. He had a, his first match was really good. Who did he face in the first match? Uh who? Uh, uh which one? Caleb Newman? Yeah, Caleb Newman. Was, was it Naito? Naito. That was a good match. Yeah. But that was the one of the few matches that Naito didn't kind of half ass it. Well, he was all energy. I think that's the very, that was the first day, first, I believe. I mean, I'm going to check it out right now. No, it was Umino. Okay. Newman that versus was, Umino. Yeah. That was that a, was good, a match. good match, yeah. But Umino just had good matches. He just didn't win a lot of them. Yeah, he's a good wrestler. Yeah. So, and then, like I said, Caleb Newman with four points. Um, in block B, so basically what's going to happen now is uh, Shingo, Great Okan, Evil, and Tetsuya Naito all tied with 10 points. But because of their wins of head-to-head, Shingo and Great Okan go through. Because they have victories over Naito and Evil, respectively. Mm-hmm. Um, in block B, you had David Finley winning the group with 12 points. Then you had Takeshita, Suji, Narita, and Jeff Cobb, all with 10. Then Hanare and Goto and Bolton with 8. Uemura also with 8. And El Fantasma with 6. So same thing. Finley wins the block. Uh, I didn't... I don't... Finley wasn't great. I think there was maybe... The... the, the early not up match. until the end. The early the, matches were not the greatest, but no. when he started ramping up towards the end, they were better. Yeah. The Takeshita so, match was good. Yeah, I think because Narita lost to uh, Narita lost to uh, no Narita beat uh, no Narita lost to both Takeshita and Suji. That's why Takeshita and Suji go through. So, I mean, I I feel like it would have been pretty lackluster if uh, Red Narita made it. Yeah, and right now I'll put a graphic of the standings there. Peruse it. Got it. Okay. Back to us. So with that, we are going to go into the tournament semifinals, quarter semis. So what they did was the group winners, they get the buy into the semifinals. Mm-hmm. And the second and third place play playoff to face the winner of the group. So in the quarterfinals, you had Shingo Takagi and Great Okan and Takeshita and Yoda Suji too. And whoever won these matches would go on to the semis to face their group winners. Now, this was the second uh, Suji Takeshita match, and this was another... Fa- like, all these matches were excellent. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Well, Shingo and Khan was kind of boring. Shingo was, and Khan was really boring. Yeah. I won't sit here and be like, oh, the match work, the in-ring work was bad, or the story was bad. It was just a just super boring. boring match to it's, watch. It's, they told the typical meat match. Yeah, and we've already watched them go through that whole feud when they were fighting over the KOPW mm-hmm. championship not too long ago. And, and then just, putting them again in the tournament together. Yeah, and it just felt like we don't we don't need this anymore. Yeah. That's the big problem with New Japan right now. I'm go- I'll say that right away. They keep having to revert back to old feuds. Yeah. And it's like I like we thought Zack Sabre Jr. Jeff Cobb was definitely coming back, like a hundred percent. Yeah. But we didn't get that. So in the end, Shingo beats Great Okan and Takeshita beats Suji. Or sorry, Suji beats Takeshita. Uh, Takeshita won the first match. Suji won the second. So now it's one-to-one. So there is a story building there. We're going to get a round three. Probably For a sure. Wrestle Kingdom. There, I, I, it's probably going to go to five. Because I would imagine that you'll get a Wrestle Kingdom match. You mm-hmm. might get somewhere down the road a DDT match. And then you'll mm-hmm. get AEW at Forbidden AEW. Door. 
that'll be the blow off at the end because forbidden so. door in case we haven't dropped the review yet that'll be next week AEW. i'm about halfway through i don't know how far you are along uh i'm on the last two matches okay so no um i'm staying away from spoilers but the only thing i do know is they're swapping all in and forbidden door next year yeah so July and august yeah so next year forbidden door is going to be in london england on the august the bank holiday whatever that is i think august 25th correct yeah and i think no, that's 24th where... it's 24th yeah something like that but uh, yeah, so that's where the blow off will be. What I would like to do instead of seeing repeats of these matches, what maybe what I would like to do was have Shingo versus Khan and Takesha versus Suji. And then Suji beats Takesha and then Suji faces Zach in the semis and Shingo faces Finley. And this way you're not in the same group. You know what I mean? Just yeah, to mix that it probably would have worked out better. I, and I think so, whatever, what were we talking about? So who won? So, uh, so Suji and Takagi go through, and then you have Zack Sabre Jr. versus Shingo, uh, Shingo in the semis, and Suji versus Finley in the semis. Which both of these matches are pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, I do nothing think to Sh- write home about. I think the, they were the resting Shingo your match two was better. Shingo versus Sabre Jr. was was much better. Mm-hmm. I think they're just it was a more two guys that absolutely know what they're doing. Where the Suji match was like he was kind of gassed, and David Finley Jr. is not the type of guy who. Junior. can go 30 minutes David yeah. Finley's not the type of guy who can carry a match for you yeah. right he's excellent he's a good wrestler and he can really work with someone who's a good wrestler but Suji's young still and he was super tired and, yeah. he, and Finley was not going to carry this match it was a typical bullet club style match yeah a lot of shenanigans. Like shenanigans yeah lots of outside the ring stuff mm-hmm. which I noticed that was a lot in this tournament too yeah which it wasn't bad okay not as bad as some years but yeah but I do think I do think in that specific match, the wrong person won. You think, okay, so we'll give the spoilers out. So Zach and Suji are meeting in the finals. You think Finley should have won that match? I think Finley should have won because it would make way more sense in terms of storytelling. Because you setting up a feud between Suji and Zack Sabre Jr., first of all, doesn't need to happen and also doesn't happen in this match. It's not set up. It's just a singular match where it's over. Like they don't have any like but but you're right though like in uh i think zach versus suji in the finals is setting up for zach versus suji at wrestle kingdom yeah because i i believe zach faces it's in like what a month yeah he, i think is a king of pro wrestling i think he's king gonna of pro do wrestling it at... is a new it's a new pay-per-view show yeah what was that you still uh, yeah okay it's a new pay per view, and mm-hmm. he's challenging Naito there for the belt. Yes. So. Um, I got really worried when they or kept is it saying destruction? that. No. Um, yeah, King of Pro Wrestling. It's yeah. in October. That is a new. That is a new event because Naito is for some reason is facing Great Ocon at Destruction. You know why they're doing that? Like the the KOPW thing is because mm-hmm. it's a new event, and they want to make sure that people watch it and it gets popular so they're putting the the main title match there instead of wrestle kingdom because everyone's going to watch wrestle kingdom anyways right that's true yeah um and then you give zach you can give zach a run Mm -hmm. and then take the belt from him later because they want they love zach they're super high on zach to me right now in aw in aw oh yeah he's the biggest he was such a huge like they were so behind him in the finals like they've been behind him for like a year and a half yeah, but I mean, they were more behind him than a hometown guy like Suji, which surprised me. Yeah, I, I think the the company's bit had his back since the t- the TV title win. To me, yeah. that's that's where it really happened. And, um, he has his and own you faction. Think this is it. I I do. I I think this is it. Has to be. There's no way Naito not only got he didn't get the run that we wanted, but he got right? a run. He got two runs. Yeah. And he had good matches in there. Not yeah. all of them were great, but he he got what we wanted. He got he finished his story, and then he didn't just cement himself by winning the belt the last time. He got two more belt runs, two right? More belts, so beating so, Mox back for that belt. Yeah, and it adds a lot to his yeah. Wikipedia wins. Yeah. 
And I don't think he needs any more. I think now you transition him down to like the continental, whatever their belt's called, not the continental yeah, ha- crown. Yeah, have him feud with Finley for the international, whatever Yeah, it is. and then you move Finley. Uh, Finley needs to move up soon, I think. Yeah. If, if you don't, then I think you're done with him. Or maybe they know he might leave, so they're not really pushing him. Yeah, the global. That could be why Jake Lee got brought in, because maybe he, he's like a backup plan in case they need yeah, him to be the leader. Yeah, Finley leaves. Um, but yeah. You do that, it's fine. The ma- the last match was really good, the final match. Mm-hmm. Um, but it the wasn't... win came out of kind of came out of nowhere though. Yeah, it wasn't spectacular. I feel like Suji kind of got injured. You could see that like they it was an abrupt like finish to the match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it maybe... still went thirty one minutes though. Oh yeah, it's not like it was uh, bad, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like. But clearly, it. clearly, Zach carried this match, and this was the type of booking that I'm not the biggest fan of either, where it was Suji dominating for most of the match. Yeah, and it wasn't like it was a weird kind of dominating too, where Zach yeah. Saber Jr. never felt like he was getting the shit kicked out of him, but he just couldn't get any offense going. Yeah. Um, it's fine, man. I, I yeah. mean, let's take that for what it is. But I do think your storyline here with David Finley would have been much better because they're both Gaijin wrestlers, number one. Mm-hmm. David Finley already has a belt. Yes. So should you want Zack Saber Jr. to lose? You just transition to him into a feud with for another belt. Exactly. Um, and he's never won that belt. And I feel like if you're whenever New Japan gets high on pushing someone, they usually let them win all the belts, right? Mm-hmm. One by one. They'll go through the belts. And it's it's fine, but I, I think you lose a, a faction battle too, because yeah, that's one of the few faction battles that we haven't seen yet that could be fresh would be uh TMDK, TMDK versus, versus the bullet club versus which bullet club. in a way no because you've gotten bullet club versus like you've got maloney and thing versus uh the shane, uh, shane haste and yeah but it wasn't a full feud on feud because we've been watching fucking lij and mm-hmm. united empire and bullet club go back and forth between the three of them for and like throw in over an a lij year. versus five guys forever yeah that's what i mean and now five guys is kind of just like in this weird spot where nobody yeah, because cares about what's them the anymore. Thing? uh we haven't seen taka we haven't seen uh t- uh what's his name uh tai chi and yuya got hurt tai chi wasn't even in the tournament no nope. which is surprising unless he's hurt too i think maybe their plan is to run them in the tags yeah, I, I think Sonata. Maybe they're trying to. They're gonna try and have a run where Sonata and Thing win the belts. Sonata and Taichi win the tag belts. Because yeah, they're both th- part of former big name tag teams, right? Like Sonata yeah. was with what Naito, and mm-hmm. and uh, Zack Saber Junior. and Taichi were like a really big tag a team group for a while. Ta- yeah, they were. They were. Um, so, so maybe all this in is all, like- yeah. Um, I like this tournament. I had a lot of fun with it. Um. I kind of, I mean, I'm kind of falling in the middle with this. What would you, what would you rate this? Uh, I would show the tournament itself. Let's do the tournament itself. And then the quarter semis and main event as one group as well. So separate, we're doing it separate. Yeah, two separate scores. So so the tournament as a whole, and then the the final bracket. I'm going to combine two ratings for each of them. So I think story-wise in the tournament is a seven, but I Mm -hmm. think match-wise the tournament was an eight. So I'll settle on a seven point five for the the main tournament. Okay, I'm I'm kind of right up there with you. I kind of I gave it a seven one for the for the tournament itself, and I kind of gave it a seven eight for the main event stuff. Okay, well, so, so I didn't rate the main event stuff. So hold on. So for the main event stuff, I think the story was slightly better. So it'd be like a seven point two, mm-hmm. but I think the match stuff was a little bit lower, like a seven point eight. So I would give it overall still a seven point five. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm a seven I'm a seven two and a seven five seven six. Yeah. So, so we're not that. You're like no. what a seven three ish. Seven three and seven yeah. Seven three seven three and seven six. I gave it. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're at about the same thing. You're just seven five seven five all around. Yeah, I think it was a good tournament. Wasn't the best one. It definitely was not bad. Yeah. Um, there was think, less matches, thank God. Yeah, but some of the talent in it kind of was lackluster. Yeah, but I think they did that on purpose, and I think losing Yuya hurt the tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I think that's why. Narita, I, 
That's I, I would have swapped out Evil in this tournament. I don't think Evil kind of needs to be there anymore, does he? I think they do because they, they're really high on House of Torture. That's another faction. Like, I'm so tired of seeing House of Torture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all with their shenanigans and all that. And... Yeah. yeah, and I'm Chaos kind of hasn't done it, hasn't been in a feud with anybody. No, the only Chaos member you had was Bolton, technically. Well, Goto. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but Goto tried to recruit Takeshita, apparently. Yes, and thank God Tanahashi was not in this tournament. I'm a legend. I know you're a legend, but slow it down, please. Yeah, just no more for him, please. But uh, And no Toru Yanu in this tournament either. Oh, thank God. Yeah. At least that's one thing. But I mean, maybe that's what this tournament suffered a little bit for me. There was not a lot of comedy spots. I'm used to like, you're used to that little bit of comedy spots in the tournament. You kind of need that. You do. You do. And we got a little bit of it, I guess, from House of Torture. Yeah. But it's um, not the same as Yano. I'm wondering what they're going to do because you you floated it out at AEW Forbidden Door. And mm-hmm. then you kind of did it again in the tournament. What's going to what's the ELP to cash it a situation? Is that going to turn into a feud? Maybe. Because they, they double table spotted. Like they made I, sure to remind they you. They are about doing. That. Um, so I sent you that clip. Um, so Scott Demore's new. Uh, new uh promotion maple leaf pro wrestling is what it is um they're doing a tournament and or not a oh, tournament that's what that was they're not a tournament they're doing two night pay-per-view kind of like a two night special event and one of the matches is josh versus Takeshita. yeah that's a good match and i know elp is also on that card now we might have to do it yeah so i'm i'm thinking for historical significance maybe that may need to Hey, you never know. It could be the new TNA, right? That's how they started off by yeah, doing. That's pay-per-views. exactly. It. So, um, yeah, with that out of the way, thanks again for joining us. Our only video of the week, but it is a tournament video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Tune in next week. Next weekend is a long weekend here in Canada. So we may be able to get off both AEW and bash in Berlin. We will be able to, we will be able to. So look for that next week. So, and then what? You know what? Maybe we might be able to get all three out because we'll be we also got Capital it. Collision on the 30th. We'll be able to because I, I at this point, by the time this video releases, I'll have already watched for, I mean, uh, All In. Or yeah, whatever, and I would have so. watched that by, uh, yeah. And then I'm off on the weekend so I could watch thing on Friday or Saturday yeah. morning and then watch Bash in Berlin right after. So it's a Saturday full of wrestling. There you go. And then we're off on Monday, so. Yeah, so. That's if we need to put off a day, there we go. So with that out of the way, guys, tune in next week where we'll have a bunch more reviews for you guys. Go make sure you go and check out Campo Reviews. Um, Make sure you go like, share, comment, all that good stuff on this video. Help out the algorithm. I noticed a little uptick in my uh, sub numbers over the last couple of days. So let's keep that going. Um, 350 before the end of the year. That's only what? 19 more subs off of 350. So let's try to get to 350. So make sure you tell all your wrestling friends to go on and subscribe to this channel. And in the words of Kenny Omega, goodbye and good night.